Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. After doing the, uh, the Alchemist uh, beer yesterday uh, that Will sent us, I uh, figured I'd go ahead and get out the other one that he sent me. Uh, Will sent this one. This is their Luscious. And what that is is a Russian Imperial Stout. And uh, it is at 11.1%. And we got to go by Rate Beer or Beer Advoca because it's not written on the can. All it has is Luscious with a set of red lips. It says 2003 to 2014, it goes up to 11, that's what it's got in the banner. And that is all the information that they put on this little peel and stick li uh, label on here. Uh, just a plain Jane, plain silver can, has no date on it. They don't date their stuff up there because it barely makes it to the shelf if it does. A lot of times the truck backs in and the line's already formed and it goes from a truck into the people's hands and don't even get to the damn shelf from what I hear. I don't live in Vermont, so I don't know, but uh, up till now, up to what, till when Will sent me these beers, uh, the only thing that, that I was familiar with was the Heady Topper, and I've only had a couple of them. And very hard to get your hands on one of them. Basically, if you don't live in that area, you got to know somebody that's willing to trade you something or send you something from them. Uh, they do some pretty tasty stuff. I've had two different ones now. We did the, uh, the one yesterday and the Heady Topper. Uh, vocal banger and the heady topper is the two that I've had so far so couldn't wait to dive into the luscious uh, uh, we had a tin with a uh, vocal banger yesterday it was a awesome tasting west coast style IPA at 7% and this is a, a lot bigger beer at 11.1% is what they have written here and uh, let me read you the commercial description here it says on the evening of August 28th 2011 Witness the destruction of the Alchemist Pub and Brewery. Moments before the floodwaters rolled across the dining room floor, I could hear my tanks bobbing against the floor from underneath my feet. Eighteen tanks of beer were poured down the drain to survive. Through an unprecedented collaboration of Vermont Brewers, I am pleased to offer you a one-of-a-kind beer release. Add mid note says here, this is for luscious pre-2014 bottled slash draft. If you have a canned luscious, see other entry. Uh, and I do have the canned, and I don't know where the other entry would be. Uh, let's see what this says. Luscious 2014. Okay, let's go to that and see what it says for that. It does have no image. And what it says here... It is an 11 percenter. Uh, a, tremendous, a tremendous amount of dark moss give this lush, silky smooth feel balanced with just a kiss of summer hops. Whereas the previous batch was partially aged on oak, this batch is 100 percent stainless steel. And this is the 2014 uh, version that's according to them. So, and being 11 percent imperial stout. That's all the information you basically need. It was a 2014 edition. This this beer will keep for years and years and years, but it's not going to keep that long here because I can't wait to try it. That's why I'm doing it now. So, Will, thanks a bunch, brother, for sending down those beers, uh, especially these two from uh, the Alchemist the Brewery. Uh, they uh, they almost have a cult following up there, and every time they hear the truck is coming, they line up. So, thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's go over and uh, do the food pairings and stuff for this particular type of beer for the people that don't know. And since it is a stout, it says it goes well with your chocolate dishes. You could have this before dinner, with your dinner, or uh, with, a, with a, a strong dish. I mean, I don't think you'd want to have cornflakes with this beer, but that's entirely up to you. If you like it, by golly, do it. Uh, 
and like I said, this beer can be selling for a long, long time. Uh, it's a damn shame that, uh, that it's that hard to get your hands on, but like I said, they had a big flood up there and basically wiped out the brewery and they had to start from scratch again up there. So uh, they, they know what they're doing up there. I just hope it doesn't flood again. Uh, I don't know what area in Verona, you know, in, in the Waterbury, if it's mountainous and they're down in the valley or whatever, but no, I hate to see anybody have a flood where they lose, you know, whether it's a somebody's house or, or a business or, or a brewery or whatever it is. That's a that's a devastating uh, thing to have happen to you. And, and I've, uh, I've been through that. I've actually not been flooded here, but I've had family and stuff that's, that's lived in floodplains and got flooded out and have to go help clean up and do all that kind of stuff. So it's a devastating effect on people that, that's had that happen to them. So uh, glass wire to pint Becker and uh, Tumbler and Nonic uh, Snifter. Uh, I brought out the dual glass for this one today, guys. So, without further ado, let me pop the cap on this and get this into the glass. And this is a 16 ounce can. Wow, that looks like motor oil coming out. That is pitch black out of the can. A lot of the stouts, it'll have a red ruby tint to it as it comes out. I'm going to go ahead and pour it all in there. Wow. I'm getting a smell already from that. I'm getting some licorice and some roasted malt from here, man. Wow. It is pitch black, guys. It's black coming out of the can. It's black in the glass. It couldn't get any blacker than that. About a finger of head on that pour down the center. Uh, khaki color. Very creamy looking in the top. Looks very good. Looks very delicious. Let's get a nose on it. Rich roasted malt. I am getting the hint of licorice in there. Maybe some dark fruit, some plums, daisins, figs. Maybe some blackstrap molasses. Maybe just a hint of some coffee in there. Mmm. Wonderful nose on this. Boy, this guy's a fair know what they're doing. Uh, I mean, they, uh, they brew some really delicious beers. Uh, I've had the uh, Handy Toppers, I told you, and I had the Focal Banger yesterday. Now we're going to do the Luscious. So let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Will. Thank you, sir. Mm, wonderful smell. Very nice. Very nice. Nice balance. Don't know what hops they're using on this, but the bitterness and the sweetness seem like they're blended and match up very well. Nice mouthfeel on this too. The only way this could be possibly be any better than what it is now is to have a barrel aged version, a bourbon barrel aged version of this. This is very easy drinking for an 11 percenter. I'm not getting any of that alcohol. No booziness whatsoever. That is so delicious. So delicious. Alright guys, so let me take it back before I sit here and drink it all in front of you. It's that damn tasty. I'm going to let this warm up. It's right out of the fridge. I'm going to take a puff or two off of a cigar while I do that. I love smoking a cigar with these dark Russian Imperial Stouts. Uh, they're so rich and a nice, uh, nice cigar goes well with them while you're letting it warm up to room temperature and sipping on it. And I've been gulping on this one, so I'm going to take it easy, a little easier and uh, sip on it here for about 30 to 45 minutes and uh, come back and do the final chug for you. Looks pretty damn impressive. Tastes pretty damn impressive. So I'll be right back, guys. Alright guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Maybe just a little bit more than a little bit. I loved it. The other half loved it too. It's very, very tasty. Very cost-effective can with just that stick-on label, just like the Focal Banger was. But like I said, from what I hear, these beers barely make it to the shelf, and if they do make it to the shelf, and if you go in the next day, the beers are gone. So, probably the main reason why they're not concerned about, and that's the way Three Floyds used to be. I mean, why do we worry about a dating machine and dating of our beers when 
they're gone the next day they show up at the store. So, and I can understand that. I mean, it's kind of arrogant, but it's, it's the reality. Uh, if you produce a beer and, and you can't, it's nowhere to be found the day after it hits the stores. Why do you have to worry about it? So, but still, it's a nice, nice thing for them to do to step up to the plate and put that information on. Uh, but if a beer is gone the next day or it doesn't even make it to the shelf and they're lined up and it goes straight to the people in the line and it's all gone before it even gets to the shelf, why do you need to worry about it? So. But it's still my soapbox to stand on about the dating thing. And as soon as you go to beer, Advocate and Rate Beer, it has, these were done in a bottle up to 2014 and I, before their flood. And now they're putting them in a can. This is a 2014 edition. It's in the can. So, uh, and it's an 11 percenter. So, by going to the site, I know that. But if you're in the store and you just have to be lucky and there's some left on the shelf by chance, you would not know that. And you wouldn't even know. If you've seen this that night, you wouldn't even know who brewed it. It doesn't have the brewery on it or anything. So, I, I mean, they're not even concerned about letting you know that this is one of their beers. The people that are in that area know. They are, they automatically know. It hits the shelf and it's wiped out from the day it shows up. So, it's a good, good problem to have if you call it a problem. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know. It is what it is on, on these type of beers, guys. Uh, as far as me, uh, we don't have any beers like that around here that disappear off the shelves as soon as it hits. So they, we just don't. We just don't. Even uh, the, uh, the the local beers, the small the small craft breweries around here, the beers are good, but they're they're not they're not outstanding. They don't get wiped off the shelf the day that they show up, or or people standing in line to get them. The probably the closest one to here where I'm at in Virginia that's like that would probably be Foothill Sexual Chocolate would probably be the only the closest one that comes to mind. Uh, uh, they stand in line for that when they line up at three or four or five o'clock in in the morning the day that it's released and it's all gone and they're limited to the, how many bottles they can buy and all that and, and then it's it's history and. and uh, uh, unless you know somebody that's able to pick you up one, uh, I don't know how what the limit is. Whether it's three or four, it's all you can buy, and you can take somebody with you. And uh, each person's allowed that many. So, and a lot of people go down there and they take people with them and stand in line just to trade those beers for something else. And, and I've had the sexual chocolate, and it is pretty damn tasty, but not tasty enough for this guy to get up and drive down there and stand in line or get in line at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning just to get your hands on one of them. So, just me being an old guy, if I was a 20-year-old, a 25-year-old guy, I would probably have the energy and the willingness to go do that. But, that's the, yeah, for me, almost, 50, I'm 58, guys, uh, uh, don't have that kind of energy to, and, or willpower that I'd want to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning and, and drive 2 or 3 hours down to uh, Winston-Salem and uh, stand in line or, uh, or sit in line or, or, or whatever you know you want to do in line uh, to, for them to open the doors at 7 or 8 o'clock and, and you're allowed to get three or four bottles. I mean if I'm going to stand in line give me the damn case of it so I don't have to worry about that for a couple of months or at least a year. I don't think they do it once a year. So, But anyway, let's get back to this one. This is pretty damn tasty. Let's do the final choke. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. It's definitely an A beer, guys. Don't think I'm going to give it to 10, but I am going to give it to 9. I think it's definitely an A beer. If I was putting a numeric rating on this beer, it would probably be about a 98 or a 99. Not quite to the 100. Uh, it has everything you, you'd want. It's very easy drinking. The only way I think I could, could make this better uh, would be to, to put it in some uh, bourbon barrels. So, uh, very tasty. Very, very tasty. But I don't think it's quite to the 10 in my scale. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. So let's go see what everybody else thinks. We'll run over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says, imagine this. They say 98 world class. It is a world class beer. Otherwise, people wouldn't stand in line for it and they wouldn't disappear off the shelf the same day it shows up. Uh, and I don't know what as far as how big and how, how much they produce. Uh, evidently there are a lot of good craft beer drinkers or connoisseurs uh, up there 
that know what these guys do and, and, and they're willing to, to go stand in line or, or, or go into the store once they hear. Evidently, the so social media has changed uh, beer distribution uh, quite a bit because uh, these breweries will post uh, when these specialty beers are coming out or when they're going to deliver or, 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 or give you the information like that. So if you're in that area, you can make plans of, of what day it is. That's what uh, Foothills does on their sacred chocolate. Uh, I'm on the email list and, and they'll, they'll come out about a week ahead of time saying sexual chocolate is going to be released on this day and all this, yada yada yada. And that way you can make plans to be there and get your allotted share if you want to, if you so choose to. Alright, over to uh, Rate Beer. Rate Beer says over all 97 and 67 in a style. So, uh, I'd, I'd probably agree with that. Like I said, if I was putting a numeric rating on this one, it would probably be a 98 or a 99. 98, 98 would probably be closer to what I'd give it uh, uh, instead of a 99. 99 is awful close to the 100, so 98 would probably be, be what I'd give it uh, on this beer. I would like to see a little more information. Uh, I mean, uh, if they're printing up a sticker, there's a lot of room to put the Alchemist Brewery on there at 11 percent and and all that, but they choose not to, just to put Luscious on there and, and 2003 to 2014, which is irrelevant to me. I'm glad they've been in business since 2003, and it says it goes up to 11. Uh, not in my book, so it goes up to 9 to me. So that's where I'm going to leave it if you've had this one from the Alchemist. This is the Luscious, which is a Russian Imperial Stout at 11 percent. Let me know what you think. Will. Thank you, brother. I do appreciate it. Glad I got to try this one. Let me know what you think, guys. Let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.